Hello, this is Curtis Crow, the Photo Pro here, and today we're going to talk about time lapses. So what we have here is we have our Canon 6D and the 24 to 105. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set this for four seconds on a remote shutter. And it's, what that's going to do is it's going to take a shot every four seconds at the clouds. What we're going to do is after the photos are done, we're going to go ahead and put it in our computer. We're going to go ahead and edit them as we please using the raw files. And then we're going to export them and I'm going to show you how to turn it from several photos into a 4K video in order to sell to either clients or use for your own marketing. So let's go ahead and get started. We have this set up. We have it for uh, intervals for four seconds and uh, we have it on infinite amount of shutters it's going to take. Sorry for interrupting myself. I just want to go ahead and go into the math a little bit for you about time lapses because you should do your math before you get on location. Now what I have it set up for is every four seconds from the time I start it to the time I end it, it's gonna take a frame. Now for the people that are more experienced with video, you already know that it generally takes 30 frames in order to make one second of video content. So we gotta use that in our time lapse. So if we set it for every four seconds to make one frame and it takes 30 frames to make a second, we gotta times our shutter or our intervals are every four seconds by how many frames a second we're setting our video. So for this video, it's it's 30 frames a second. So four times 30 is 120. So in real life, every two minutes is one second of time lapse. So easy math. If you want to have a 10 second time lapse, you need 20 minutes of shooting. If you want a 15 second, you know, 30 minutes of uh, if you want a 30 uh, second time lapse, then you have to be out there for one hour. So it's very important to know that. And again, you have to do it by your uh, frames per second. So if you're intending to make a 4K time lapse at 120 frames per second, then uh, you're going to need to do your math a little bit differently. Again, it's whatever your delay is between shots times your frames per second and uh, then divide by 60 for how many minutes it's going to take and it'll let you know that every second is however many minutes and then you can do your math from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and let myself get back to the video so you can enjoy the content. Now the reason why we're doing so many seconds so quickly is because clouds move very quickly and we want the motion to be at least somewhat smooth in order to make the effect look better. So let's go ahead and get this started. I have it set up to beep and I'm gonna go ahead and leave this alone for probably about a half hour and uh, then we're going to go ahead and throw this up in Lightroom and I'm going to show you how to turn it into a video. All right, so we have this uploaded into Lightroom. As you can see on the bottom here, we have all the photos. Um, I did some toying around, so you'll see a couple of them are different exposure. Um, but that won't matter because we're going to select them all and edit them all as one mass edit. So the very, very first thing you want to do when getting this set up and ready to become a time lapse is turn this into the aspect ratio of a television. So the aspect ratio for televisions is 16 by 9 as you can see the resolution here. Uh, that's just an example resolution it won't ex export to that it's just gonna give you an idea of what we are looking at. Now we want mostly the clouds and as you can tell we're gonna get a little bit of this uh, house here. So we can do one of two things we can either crop the house out so we do it like that or like that. I personally like that more because you get more of these trees. Where over here you, you don't get as much. Um, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to work with that. So we're going to go ahead and hit done. And so this is now our 16 by 9 uh, HD ratio uh, photo that we want to work with. So now we start with editing. Now because we have all these selected and we have auto sync on, auto sync is going to go ahead and move everything into, yep, we got everything selected. Uh, it's going to move everything into the new settings so we don't have to individually edit all these photos. So let's go ahead and start toying around with settings. So I know this is my uh, preset for human type people, but we're going to still go ahead and apply it because it's got more applications than just human type people. Now if you scroll down to the bottom here um, you'll see that there's a new feature in Lightroom called Dehaze. Now this is important because some of these photos 
uh, the sun peeks out from the um, from the tree, and it causes a little bit of haze to go on there. So uh, if you want to toy around with the dehaze, if you have that type of situation going on, you can. I'm just going to add a little bit, and I'm going to keep it there. And we're going to really bust up the uh, the settings on here because I like my time lapses to be a little over edited because it really makes the video look cool in my opinion because the thing with video is video doesn't really shoot in raw or at least it takes a lot of modding in order to get your uh, camera to shoot in raw and even when you can you can only shoot for a couple seconds so what we're really doing here is we're adding a level of editing that you don't see in video mode so you can add some really cool effects uh, that just video doesn't normally see and it looks really really awesome actually so we're gonna turn down shadows a little bit or we're gonna turn up we're definitely gonna turn down I don't like how it's just a little bit green uh, so we're gonna keep that out and bring that down and as you can tell here there's still a little bit of the white showing here so this is very important remember we have auto sync on everything so even local adjustments are gonna ch uh, have an effect on all the photos which is important we don't want to go through every individual photo and uh, make the individual edits so what's very important for this edit is that we go ahead and show the mask overlay and as you can tell I have auto masking on um, that's very important for this style because you don't want it to go off from such a straight edge you want it to just hit the uh, house itself so we're actually going to go like this and go like that just a tad bit just to make sure we get those areas good as you can tell auto mask is on and then we're going to erase just a little bit off the tree because the trees are fine really it's just the house come on there we go so right over here it's just pure black so it doesn't really matter too much I just want to make sure we don't get the edge of the leaves because when it makes this local adjustment off this image if the leaves change at all it's gonna keep the local adjustment not on the new leaves but fortunately these leaves and it can cause a little bit of weirdness on there we don't want no weirdness so like I said just get the top where the leaves move and you should be fine and then we hit done to see the results boom that is pretty dark uh, I'm gonna go ahead and keep that like that uh, I'm gonna turn that on to get rid of that little bit of chromatic abrasion there yep it is gone I like that and this is completely up to you you can uh, go ahead and fix the um, lens distortion if you want uh, I personally like lens distortion to an extent on uh, time lapses it really kind of gives that bubbling effect uh, especially on wide angles and I enjoy that but it's all about personal preference and and also just because I enjoy that doesn't mean my client will enjoy that um, but like I said it does give a more natural look where this gives a flatter look and uh, whatever one you're going for feel free to, to make that adjustment as you wish uh, so I kinda like where we're at uh, I'm gonna see if we want to do any more sharpening again have at it with these edits because you're able to bring in a level of editing that videos can't do so a lot of times the over editing has a very cool look to it in my opinion uh, if we want to add a little bit more dynamic range we can bring this down bring this up bring shadows up but we don't want to add too much dynamic range because again color is going to start creeping back in here we don't want any color we want it perfectly silhouetted so I'm actually going to bring that back down again so bam we're going to do it like that and then tint and temperature makes a huge difference because where it just looked like it was just daytime we can make it look like it's a sunset and I kind of like the sunset look um, now if another great thing about doing these time lapses is you can push out like four or five of these different edits and the, your client can basically select which one they want whether they want one with a lot of dynamic range one with a lot more silhouetting in it 
uh, one that has the bubbling distortion, one that looks like a sunset instead of just daytime. You know, let them choose because that can make you more money in the long run. So I'm going to do it right there just because it's artsy and we're going to see how it looks. Now, this is the next important thing about doing a 4K time lapse is we're going to go ahead and start the export and we are going to do time lapse major edited major edits uh, for YouTube and just have fun with it because time lapses I mean they don't take insanely long to do and you can make a lot of changes in them and really find out what your style is so there's two ways you can do this you can do long edge but I think it's easier to go off short edge and set your short edge to 2160 now 4K is twice the resolution of HD, meaning that 1080 is really uh, 2160 if you times it by two. So that's very important to know uh, because that'll get you the right resolution no matter what. If you change your aspect ratio, um, basically you're still you should still be good in uh, the long run because. Most of these uh, resolutions stay on the same short number, it seems. But if you're not sure, just go to Google, do a quick five second search, and it'll always give you the resolution that you want. But, like I said, this is the easiest for me because there's several different types of 4K with different resolutions, so I just go off of the 2160 on the short edge. So, now we have our location. Now we have our information. We're doing 100% quality, sharpened for screens. Uh, short edge I'm not putting uh, watermarking or anything else like that doing this as JPEG and now we're gonna go ahead and hit export so we're gonna go ahead and let this export into the folder and I will be right back to show you what the next step is alright so our export is now done as you can tell the progress bar is gone we're gonna now take a look at the folder that we just created which is this one right here and as you can see the resolutions right and we can even preview the file by hitting spacebar on Mac and they look pretty cool so we're gonna actually put this in the time-lapse so what we gotta do is we gotta go to an application that application is called time-lapse assembler so when we go into time-lapse assembler this gives us the option to do everything we want in life uh, so we're gonna keep the resize on there because I sometimes it glitches and if you don't have the resize on there with the proper resolution it can uh, act a little funny we want 30 frames a second and then all we do is choose the folder which we're going to do this one right here click it and then we hit encode now oh, and we're gonna call it YouTube time-lapse this is gonna go ahead and do the 4k time-lapse and it's gonna start encoding now with it being a 4k time lapse it does run a bit slow so we're going to go ahead and run, let that run and uh, we'll come right back once it is done all right so it is now done encoding so once it's done we go into the folder as you can see we got all the pictures here like normal those won't be affected but on the very bottom you'll see a video and as you can tell the dimensions are appropriate the duration is appropriate uh, we got one point Eight, seven gigabytes for just 20 seconds so uh, that kind of shows you how much data time lapse is really used but let's go ahead and watch that and I'm gonna go ahead and upload this as a separate video as you can tell the clouds look nice and smooth uh, the trees unfortunately are choppy but it's kind of got like a walking dead look to it so it's still good um, I might do some further editing uh, just because I want if it's gonna look like the walking dead I'm gonna want it a little bit more yellow and um, a little bit brighter I think because although it looks good here it looks a little too dark here in my opinion so I might go a little brighter all the way across but you know you don't always get the perfect results the first time you do it so that being said I'm gonna go ahead and make those edits by myself and I will post the 4k video up on YouTube for you guys all to see and this actual 4k glory and uh, if you have any questions let me know down below in the comment section uh, if you want any additional uh, tips for setting up your 4K videos, I will have alternative solutions if you don't have a Mac uh, to assemble your time lapse.
again I use the application time-lapse assembler and uh, it is for Mac and I love it so that's uh, that's about it uh, if you have any questions let me know down below and be sure to subscribe in the corner all right well that's about all the time I have for today as always this has been Curtis Crow the photo pro and as I always do toodles second thing is very important and I feel like it's something that people kind of graze over and that's itemize your gear find out how much every single piece of gear you have costs nice front element I don't know if you can see that how beautiful that is let's open up the other side so you can see all the way teens if we wanted to uh, see how much that's changed in the before and after shot